When Splash Team released Tinykin in September of 2022, the game was praised for successfully implementing elements of the Pikmin franchise with classic collectathons like Banjo Kazooie and the 3D Mario games. In this video, Splash Team co founder Romain Claude reveals how Tinykin started out as a Pikmin inspired roguelike, how his team was inspired by Dark Souls, and the crucial element of game design that nowadays many games tend to forget. I'm Romain. Romain Claude. I'm one of the two co-founders of Splash Team. On my side, I take care of programming, mostly game frame programming, game design, level design as well. The story of Tinykin starts in 2019, when Romain, together with three friends, participated in that year's Global Game Jam. Developers had 48 hours to design a game based on the concept of what home means to you. During the Game Jam, Romain and his crew created a prototype of what would become the 3D platformer we know today. We make this very small game called uh, Bubble Town. You kind of start to see our influences, like the Pikmin aspect of the game where you have to collect more and more creatures. Bubble Town's gameplay is very simple. Your friends are lost in a dark, creepy forest, and your objective is to bring them back home. The more people you save, the higher your score. But if you stay outside for too long without rescuing someone, it's game over. After the game jam, we said, hey, why not make it an actual game? It was a 2D top-down game with procedurally generated levels. And it was a bit more like making a roguelike out of Pikmin. We did a first demo and we were not very satisfied with what we had. We were not very comfortable with the procedural generation, all the roguelike aspects. We are more comfortable with traditional handmade games, especially with platformers. We got partially inspired by Pikmin for the pink one. You used to carry objects and the red one that explodes, but then for the more platformy ones, like the green ones that you can use as ladders and the bridge ones. This was less Pikmin because you don't have these kind of uh, things in uh, Pikmin. It was more like, if Pikmin was a platformer, what would that be? Tinykin has a lot of other influences. The developers were inspired by a variety of 3D platformers, ranging from the old and obscure to the modern and renowned. We were a lot into the Ratchet and Clank series, Jack and Daxter's, Mario 64, Banjo Kazooie. For more recent games, there is very good indie 3D platformers. For instance, uh, At In Time, which is a game that I really, really loved. The developers at Splash Team also took inspiration from the 2000 Dreamcast game Fur Fighters. And even though they appear to be polar opposites, certain parts of Tinykin were inspired by none other than From Software's Dark Souls series. A part of the team got inspired by the Dark Souls series. The fact that the player can explore freely and you progressively unlock shortcuts that allows you to quickly get back to another part of the level without having to redo it all. In Tinykin, you unlock green ropes that you can climb on and uh, white wires that you can slide on. So these kind of things as you can see, we are also gamers, so obviously there is a lot of things that are inspiring us. What truly sets Tinykin apart from its peers is the complete lack of combat. There are no enemies to defeat in the house, only items to collect and NPCs to meet. The decision to avoid combat was inspired by Ubisoft's innovative 3D platformer Grow Home, in which you have to climb a giant plant, making it grow by planting seeds along the way. Like Tinykin, Chrome has a sandbox-like level design and does not feature any enemies, which lets the player focus completely on the exploration and gameplay. This is a good example of a pure exploration. The only thing you do is seeing a point, which can be very, very far, and wondering, okay, how do I get there? This is the kind of feeling we wanted for uh, Tinykin. The switch to 3D wasn't simple for Splash Team, which mostly had experience with 2D platformers. Its previous project, Splasher, is a precision platformer with short, linear levels. And before that, Romain worked on Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends at Ubisoft. 
For Tinykin, the developers had to take a completely different approach to designing its open-ended stages. When you build uh, levels for a linear game, you have to care a lot about the rhythm and uh, sequencing between action and poses and the scenery. Do you have cutscenes? Where do you put the cutscenes? And it's, it's a lot about pacing. In an open world game, it's a lot more about exploration and strategically position points of interest to make sure that the player won't get bored and won't get lost. You can have a linear game with only corridors and it won't be a problem because you always know that you have to move forward. But in an open world, the less you have corridors, the better it is. And the more you have external and high places, even better uh, it is because it becomes easier to appropriate the, the place and to do some kind of map in your, in your head. Adding an extra dimension to a video game creates many additional pitfalls, one of which is navigation. Making sure the player doesn't get lost is an essential part of the developer's job, and Splash Team devised several solutions to guide Tinykin's players through its levels. In the very first playtest, people struggle to know what to do next when they achieve something. This can be partially solved with storytelling. For example, there is this README character who is uh, guiding you through the game. And then in terms of navigation, we tried to always make sure that in most of the places, you can always see something to do, something to collect or something to explode, uh, something to push. Something important as well is to have a lot of places that are small and intimate, like below the coach, uh, inside some kind of furniture. The places are a bit like small open worlds, small villages, small cities. The way we've built the levels was around the idea of having a central place on the ground. So you always start on the ground and the point is always to get as high as possible because there is interesting stuff in the heights and you can also have a good point of view in order to find potentially hidden stuff or to have a clearer view of where your objectives are and, and things like that. Of course, none of this would matter if the game wasn't simply fun to play. Luckily, the controls are snappy and satisfying, and features like the bubble and the bar of soap add additional depth to the movement. It's not surprising that nailing the gameplay is a key part of Splash Team's design philosophy. Having a good feeling with the controls and the camera and the animations is one of the most important things for me. For example, if you design a chair, the point of the chair is, is to sit on the chair, but if the chair is not comfortable, you will not want to sit, so it's important to make it comfortable. And the video game is the same. If the game is not nice to play, just as a toy, I'm not talking about the goal of the game, I'm not talking about level design, just the controls and the game feel. There is no point of making the rest of the game. It depends on the studios and on the developers, but for me, that's one of the crucial aspects that makes a game uh, attractive. A big thank you to Romain for taking the time to talk about Tinykin, and thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Indie Game Oasis if you enjoy content about indie games and game design, because I'm planning on making more videos on other indie games in the future. Let me know in the comments what your favorite part of Tinykin is, and which other indies you'd like to see a video on. See you next time!